What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here. You know, last week was a slow week for us, man. I was fighting the flu or something I caught in New Orleans. Uh, who knows what it was down there um, in, in NOLA, man. But we are back, and I really wanted to start highlighting some of the recruiting success that a lot of FCS schools are having. And today, or, or really in the past 48 hours, Tennessee State has landed multiple four-star high-level transfers. And I feel like we, we have to talk about this, man. It, it has been impressive what Eddie George is really putting in getting done over there in Tennessee. And I know the SWAC and a lot of those teams have a lot of positive momentum on the recruiting trail, but right now Tennessee state looks like it could be a really, really sneaky pick for the OVC this year, especially now that Murray state is headed off to the MVFC to take on what is going to be a gauntlet in the Missouri Valley conference. That OVC is really left with only a handful of teams that I think are realistic contenders for the title. And Tennessee State was really, what, one or two games away last year from potentially being at, in the running for that conference championship. So I think Tennessee State is going to be a sneaky good team this year. But we have to talk about the recruiting success and what that staff under Eddie George is doing up there in Tennessee. And it all starts with just a few weeks ago, they land four-star transfer Ohio State linebacker Kayvon Pope, a consensus four-star prospect formerly out of the state of Virginia, was a top 10 inside linebacker according to both Rivals and 247 Sports. He was initially he was an, an initially an athlete coming out of high school. He played wide receiver, running back, along with his role at inside linebacker. And those are positions that I think are really hard to Play play multiple. I don't. I think the mindset you have to have as a linebacker is one that you don't see in a lot of wide receivers, especially, and even some running backs. His senior year, guys, rushed for over a thousand yards, sixteen touchdowns, had thirty three catches with seven receiving touchdowns, thirty one tackles for loss, and led his high school to a state title game appearance before committing to Ohio State. And this guy held offers from everybody in the country, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan. It didn't matter. Pope was wanted by every single team in the entire country. So he goes to Ohio State, commits. He saw action in over 30 games for the Buckeyes throughout his career. He played in 11 of the 14 games, even as a true freshman on a team where the Buckeyes won the Rose Bowl that year over, I believe it was Washington in that Rose Bowl. But his career stats, 19 total tackles, a tackle and a half for loss, five PBUs, two interceptions, which he got in back-to-back -back games. And he really played mostly a key piece in the special teams aspect of what the Buckeyes were doing. That defense was really loaded, especially at the linebacker spot. And he never really found a strong rotation in their starting lineup, which ultimately led to while this name might sound familiar to some of you guys, he made headlines, of course, storming off the field this year during a game, throwing his stuff into the stands, and he tweeted, it was in that game against Akron, and tweeted F Ohio State on his Twitter after the game. And he also released a series of tweets where he criticized the coaching staff and Ohio State as a whole in his tweet went as you only go to OSU speaking about Ohio State if you want to be and then released a bullet list of stuff he said highly disrespected by the coaching staff treated unfairly in which in quotations he puts young young guys playing before seniors looked at as a hoodlum because you're vocal treated as if you're not a high caliber player because I am Coach's first program guy they are not player first uh, they're not a player's first pr program Treated as if players' opinions have no say-so because your body and mental health does not matter. And players' point of view can't be seen because coaches claim that it has happened to them. And that's that's what Pope released on Twitter. He also did apologize for how he handled everything. But, you know, regardless if you agree with how he did it or not, he's now headed to Tennessee State after his career at Ohio State. He has, he's going to have two seasons of eligibility left as he enrolls for the Tigers. And he, I think he projects as an immediate contributor as long as everything goes along with fitting into the scheme of what Tennessee State wants to do defensively. And they got plenty of Ohio State connections. I'm not surprised Pope landed here. We all know what Eddie George was at Ohio State, but also their DB coach and Richard McNutt, OSU alum. 
running back coach of uh, Pearson, OSU alum, even the tight end coach, Mike Brewster, former OSU alum. So there's a lot of former Buckeyes on this staff. But I think when you look at the athleticism Pope brings and just the experience overall of being in that top-notch Power 5 program, Ohio State's a national contender year in and year out, all that experience, all that knowledge, being in a, one of the top systems in the country is really going to make Pope, in my opinion, easy to step in, easy to find a role in this Tennessee State defense. And linebacker wasn't really their point of, I would say, a point of strength for them last season. I really do think that Pope is going to find his footing very fast. And you're going to see him be one of those vocal leaders on this Tennessee State defense. You've already seen in his tweets, his actions, he's not afraid to speak up, speak out. And so I'm really interested to see how Pope fits in this defense. But I expect a huge upgrade at that in, inside linebacker spot for Tennessee State here. And then two of the more recent commitments, man, J.J. Holloman, former FIU, former Georgia wide receiver, was a consensus four-star prospect out of the state of Georgia, was a top 100 player in the class of 2017. Let me put that in perspective. A top 100 player was a top 10 player in the state of Georgia and held a 95 overall grade, according to 247 Sports, coming out of high school. Was a U.S. Army All-American, over 70 catches, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns at Newton High School. But he commits to Georgia initially, man. And he, you know, he doesn't see much his first year, but he was prompt to blow up in his in his 2019 season. In the 2018 season, 24 catches, 418 yards, five receiving touchdowns. He was averaging over 17 yards per catch in 2018. And going into 2019, him and DeAndre Swift were the only two people that had a certain number of receptions. He was going to be the leading wide receiver. For Georgia, had a huge spring game in that G-Day game where he had a touchdown, multiple catches, almost 100 yards, and he was primed to be the guy for Georgia. Well, then an assault charge came or an alleged assault charge. Kirby Smart removes him from the team. He winds up at FIU where he plays the COVID plague season, plays a solid season, eight catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown in a very, very short and weird season. Then he transfers again. But it gets weird. He commits to Liberty, is going to transfer to Liberty to play with Malik Willis. Well, FIU, there were complications with this transfer. He couldn't play in the 2021 season. So he sits out a year, and now he winds up at Tennessee State. And I think this could be one of the most impactful transfers in the FCS. I really do. I love Holloman's game. I remember com him coming out of high school. I, uh, every, every SEC program, every program in the country wanted him. He can ball. And I think he could be one of the missing pieces for this Tennessee State offense, which at times through the air – did struggle in big games. But Zaire Thornton at wide receiver, of course, uh, Devin Sterling at running back, are both back, both OVC All-Americans last year. This could be an electric combination if you bring in Holman in, into this into the system, into what they already have on the offensive side of the ball. I know the quarterback is a question mark for Tennessee State. Is it going to be Shalil Garrett is it, or, or Garnett? Is it going to be, or is it going to be someone else who came in? Who's going to replace Hickbottom as the main guy, and who's going to bring that experience, that versatility, the not turning the ball over, being the leader of the offense? That's a big question. But this wide receiving core looks very good right now. They bring in an All-American running back back who absolutely broke out last season. So I think there's a lot of pieces there for Tennessee State. They got some great offensive line pieces, got a kid that transferred in from Grambling. That the pieces are there. What Holloman brings is size, ball skills, and just the overall, again, experience. He's done it at the highest level. If he's putting up numbers like that in the SEC, he's not going to be easy to hold in the OVC or the FCS. And I'm very, very excited to see what he can bring. I'm sure he's going to be motivated to prove everybody that this opportunity is going to be his and he's going to make a mark. And for me, He's an immediate pick to potentially be a first-team All-American in the OVC and even be an All-American overall in the FCS. I really like Holloman and his potential, and I think Tennessee State lands an instant playmaker at wide receiver. Now, the other transfer, Ja'Shawn Watkins, Memphis defensive back. This guy was a former four-star recruit, according to ESPN, three-star prospect for 247 out of Tennessee. He played multiple positions in high school, man. Again, a versatile athlete, wide receiver, DB, QB, running back. 
he played it all at East Nashville Magnet High School. Had a was a four time Class Three A playoff appearance leader of that team. He he helped extend that streak, and his career stats are wild, man. Just hang with me here. Over 500 passing yards, five touchdowns through the air, over 500 rushing yards, 10 rushing touchdowns, 43 catches, 641 receiving yards, nine receiving touchdowns, had over 120 tackles, eight pass breakups, and six interceptions. Man, this kid was a was an impact player at multiple at multiple positions. Didn't just play those positions but was an impact player and was an all-region selection and actually was, if you go back and watch, at the 2019 NFL Draft in Nashville, was recognized for his achievements in, this, in the state of Tennessee at high school football. So this guy has all the potential in the world. He goes to Memphis, commits to them over Ole Miss and some really high-level suitors. Didn't see much accent, action at his time at Memphis. He did redshirt his first year, 2019. That team was loaded. That team was the AAC championship team. They made a New Year's Six Bowl appearance against Penn State in the Cotton Bowl. Of course, the coaching staff changes everything that comes along with this high-level success that Memphis had. He only saw he only saw two games in over three years and was an all-AAC, all-academic team selection. And so for me... Watkins comes with a lot of eligibility. I believe with the COVID season, he has three years left. That's what I read somewhere. Other places say two, but no one knows how this COVID thing works. So I'm going to say three years of eligibility. He comes into a TSU secondary that they already lost Corey Raymond, the the uh, all American safety for them out of the 2021 season. Watkins comes in six four over 200 pounds, and I think he's going to offer one versatility where he can fit in multiple places in the defensive backfield, but also that length that they're really missing to go against some of the top teams that they're going to face. When you look at that, you know even the classic against Jackson State. You've got guys like a Malachi Wyman. You've got guys that are going to be tall, lanky guys, Trevante Rucker, Shane Hooks. They're going to be big. And so for me, Watkins is going to be able to offer a piece for Tennessee State to put in those situations, and he's going to be able to make plays on the ball and be ready to make plays. And so I think if he comes in, which he's already on the roster, participated through spring and everything like that, He's going to ha he's going to be an instant contributor, in my opinion. I think in Memphis, it was real hard between coaching staffs and everything to find a role, but I do believe he projects as one of the top contributors to that secondary for Tennessee State. So Eddie George is doing his thing over here, and I'm very, very impressed with the list of transfers they have. They just had their spring game and had a long list of three four-star visitors that came in and, and wanted to see what Tennessee State was doing. The crowd was there. It was an excellent turnout. I don't remember the exact number, but Tennessee State has as much positive momentum as anybody in FCS football right now. And I think right when you're looking at it going into April right now, I don't think Tennessee State is going to be a pushover for anybody on their schedule, and I think they're they are primed to compete for an OVC title come this come this fall of 2022. So keep your eye on Eddie George and Tennessee State as they are making large strides into improving this program and becoming a real FCS contender. And it's going to be interesting if they win the OVC and get that automatic bid. Can they make a little bit of noise in the playoffs, and can they represent for the OVC? going into the playoffs later this fall. So lots going on here at Tennessee State. I really wanted to highlight it. I think they're doing a great job right now recruiting. they got a lot of positive momentum. So keep your eye on Tennessee State people. They are not here to play around when it comes to the 2022 season. But guys, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Comment below what your thoughts are on Tennessee State as they are making waves on the recruiting trail, man. But for right now, guys, the Blue Bloods are out.